Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Knowledge Broker Podcast. I'm Joshua Campbell, your host, and joining me as always is... Joshua Zink! Awesome. Da, 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 da. So, adding on to our podcast from last week, did you do anything in the last week that was out of your comfort zone? I did. Well, I mean, currently, we're out of our comfort zone right now. Sure we are. Maybe we're, the more comfortable zone, though. We are in the more comfortable zone. <laughs> uh, yeah, we changed our location, if you guys can't tell. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, actually, I did. Um, a couple of friends and I went out on Saturday night and, uh, we were supposed to go to this one bar and it was supposed to be very much my scene. And then at the last minute we decided to change. So instead of being a stick in the mud and said, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I decided to go and do it. Good for you. I hated it. Yeah. (laughs) Every second of it, but I still did it. And I'm happy that I did it because, uh, it was something that was outside my comfort zone, something that I'm usually not really comfortable with. So cool. But what about you? Did you do anything? Um, I listened to a podcast uh, in the last few days from Brene Brown, and um, it was talking about comfort zone of all things. Oh, okay. And it talked about how if people are being courageous, but they're feeling comfortable, uh, or sorry, if they're feeling if they're feeling brave. And comfortable or courageous and comfortable, they're probably not actually courageous or brave. Meaning like if you're not feeling uncomfortable, yeah, uh, you're not actually being courageous or brave. Interesting. So courageous or brave would involve being uncomfortable out of your comfort zone. Well, that's, isn't that interesting? So did yeah. you do anything then along those lines? Uh, I thought about it a lot in regards to, uh, for instance, we went uh, bowling on the weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm not a super great bowler. It is what it is. But it's funny how some people weren't playing anymore because they weren't very good. Really? And then uh, like that would be staying in your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. And then if you didn't really care and the only way to get better is to continue to play and practice, Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately that was me getting out of the comfort zone and you just keep going at it. Well, there you go. Look at us. I hope that everyone at home did something too that was a little courageous and uncomfortable. Sure. Um, But actually, so today's topic has nothing to do with comfort zones, but (laughs) uh, we're moving on a little bit into uh, planning for your future. So planning for your business future. And I'm really excited about this episode because uh, you actually brought it up uh, a couple of weeks ago to me as something to uh, think about and to potentially talk on the podcast. And so I'm happy that we're doing it today. Yeah. So uh, the first thing I wanted to start off with and just right off the bat, why is it so important to you know, plan and actually take the time to think about your future and what you want your business success to look like? Uh, It's all about goals uh, and accomplishments. And uh, in order to actually uh, achieve anything, you have to have set the goal. Mm. Uh, I don't think that anybody's ever uh, gone out aimlessly without a goal and actually achieved anything. Uh, If they did, it was completely random luck and to the point that you can't repeat it. Mm. uh, You probably also, uh, you might not even have found that you even achieved goals. You might have been achieving goals the entire time without knowing it. Yeah. So I feel like uh, people that actually sit down, set your goals in regards to even as a kid, uh, whether it's getting certain grades in school, uh, as when it comes to the workplace, us setting up projects and having goals and timelines. uh, No different than if you think about the way that people do like Weight Watchers and whatnot. That's all goal setting. Yeah, of course. There's nothing, there's uh, there's so many things in this world that are just goal setting. Uh, and obviously, uh, the proof is in the pudding and it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it uh, really allows you to look at your business and your future on a bigger picture. I mean, if we don't plan for like our futures, then we can kind of get stuck in a small frame of mind, I believe. Yeah. Um, so planning for your futures really does expand your horizons and expand your company's potential because you've taken the time to say, these are my goals or yeah. these is what this is what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, so the big thing uh, that we're going to be talking about today is this theory called backcasting. And now this is the element that you brought to my touch a couple weeks ago because I had never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. No idea what it was. So can you tell everyone at home just in case no one knows what it is like I did? Uh, well, I actually didn't know the term backcasting until a few weeks ago. Before that, uh, I used it as a term of reference mm. or not. I guess I used it as more as a phrase. And someone said, oh, it's backcasting. And I was like, oh, fair enough. Now yeah. I got the word. Now it makes more sense. Uh, so backcasting would be the opposite of forecasting. Okay. So forecasting, foreshadowing, for, so it's before, and you're planning ahead. Backcasting would be putting yourself in the future and then figuring out uh, or the, the company or a situation in the future yeah. and then looking back and saying, what would I need to have accomplished to get to that 
position. Mm-hmm. So it's very much, uh, it's a different kind of mindset where you actually put yourself in the successful position uh, and then look back and say, what does it take to get to that successful position? Mm-hmm. And that's what you do versus on the other side saying, okay, well, I'm going to, f- I'm going to try and do some forecasting here and then we'll see where I get to. It's very much more open-ended versus backcasting, yeah. which has a firm ending and a firm conclusion, which you work towards. Yeah. And the, the cool thing about it too, is that you, because you're working from a vision, you're not working it's different with, with like forecasting, for example, because you're setting something that you hope to achieve. Basically, mm. you want that that world to look like that mm. um, with backcasting. It's kind of like you're planting a vision that who knows if it's not made yet. Right. Like it's mm. like you're just planting the seed and then building the bridges backwards to try to figure it out. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, I bet like, well, because you didn't know the term, but you'd understood the process before. Mm. I have a feeling that a lot of people probably have uh, done something like this before in their problem solvings, but they might just not know what they are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's funny how I think it's a much more usable technique than forecasting. Uh, And if we call it forecasting for today, at least to stay on the same mindset, Um, if you picture yourself, uh, say you're cutting the back lawn or you're you're cutting your lawn in general and you're trying to say, okay, like... I'll keep doing strips Mm -hmm. and eventually I'll be cut. Yeah. You could also say, okay, here's the cut lawn and this is what I want it to look like. And these, this is the tactics that I'm going to do. So I think that backcasting does allow you the opportunity to work closer with team members. Okay. Involve other people because you'll, you'll say, here's the tasks that need to be completed. Mm -hmm. And here are the people that I'm going to work with to get it done. Mm -hmm. If you look on the force on the the previous side, the forecasting side, often you'll just take it on yourself. Oh, and you'll okay. start to try and delegate as you go mm-hmm. rather than creating an entire position from the very beginning. Yeah, creating a, a, at least a plan from the mm-hmm. beginning because that's another difficult thing about forecasting is that you are like, if if something if something that's not part of your like 10-step plan, let's say, goes right, mm. it's very hard to then pivot to do different things because now you're like, okay, but we needed to do step four to get to step five. And if we can't get to step five, then we can't get to step 10. Sure. With backcasting, it allows you to um, pivot more. It allows you to create different paths because at the end of the day, you know what your goal is mm-hmm. and there isn't a vi- like as clear cut plan to get there because a lot of it has, you can, you honestly, I think backcasting just allows you to make more failures than forecasting does. I, yeah, it probably, or it limits you in the amount of failures you might, or like errors you might have. Mm. Um, the, what I'm thinking of is if you had to build a, per, a pyramid, yep. um, if you were doing back casting, you would know the height of the pyramid that you wanted yep. and you would build the outside uh, perimeter of the lowest wall first and probably work inward. Mm. So you'd work inward. If you were doing forecasting, you might start with one rock at the very center and just start building it out like a pile. So I think that, and like, if you think about it, you could probably make a lot more errors because it's not specific as to what your goal is. Yeah. With backcasting, you have a specific goal and then you build up to that goal and then it's done. Yeah. If you go the opposite way, it's almost a, it's a little bit more aimless. Mm. Um, And I think that uh, it seems like it's actually a really good progress tool. Mm. But in the end, I feel like the backcasting side is much more effective. Yeah. And it does include some elements of like scenarios like you can include scenarios when you're doing backcasting in case like oh well if this happens then we can do this but it's not solely based on that too which is yeah. really interesting um so have you ever used backcasting with knowledge broker or yeah we do uh almost always with clients yeah. um we sit down with clients and we'll discuss uh, and we do get this from our coaching uh, and we discuss how if we were to sit down and have the same conversation mm-hmm. in three years time, looking back, what would have had to have had happened for this to be a success? Meaning we try to allow our clients to sit in the future mm-hmm. and then look back from that future point mm-hmm. and discuss with us what they'd like to see have had happened. Okay. So then and on that then, do you think it's specific to um, jobs? Like, do you think that some businesses can operate that way and some can't? Uh, I think that there's, uh, it offers a value piece that a lot of people don't, uh, appreciate. Mm-hmm. Uh, often we don't get asked the same question. Like how often are you asked to backcast something? Yeah. If you had to sit down in five years time and think about where you want to be in five years time, 
then all of a sudden you could put the pieces below it to get to that point in five mm -hmm. years time and chances are you might even get there in two years time because you start putting the pieces together yeah so how often are we given the opportunity to even mention or discuss what our uh, an opportunity in our life or some process or some bless you or some goal that we're trying to achieve um how often are we give them that opportunity and it's mm. so much value to the person that gets to say it yeah it's the other person's job just to shut up and listen mm -hmm. and then it's just a team building exercise to get there all together right sure it is and it, it, i definitely can see that you can incorporate your clients in there um i was also thinking that like backcasting could probably like across all platforms i think it can be used i think we can also use it a lot in our daily lives mm -hmm. um like you said it doesn't have to be you know a, like a five-year goal it could take two years you know planning for the future sometimes seems like very scary and very daunting but it doesn't have to be you know 10 years down the road it can be like five it can be two it can, it can be, be an hour it, yeah exactly if you think about uh, even like cooking a dish if it's an hour to cook the dish if you know what the dish looks like in the end and what you want yeah it's a lot easier to build it up than to just to read the directions and not know what the ending is so it's almost like if you have like the ending picture of a recipe yeah it's a lot easier to build up to it actually that is so true that's a really great example of it hmm. um i also think um that backcasting allows for far more creativity i think sure. that it allows for you know you can plan for something that might not have happened yet and that was one thing that when I was doing my research into it, because like I said, I had no idea what this terminology was. And I, I, as someone who loves planning, I'm like, how did I never hear about this before? Um, but just the idea that you can take different avenues to get there because something that you're working towards, let's say it's not even invented yet. It's like sure. it allows yeah. you to plan for a future that does not exist because the way I like to look at it is you're not creating like a goal or a target. You're creating like a vision, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're thinking long term. So like with your companies and such like that, yep. creating that vision of what you want it to look like or what you want to do or what you want to encompass. It allows you to be creative. It allows yeah. you to make like creative mistakes. It allows you to get um, adventurous with your techniques. And I think yep. that's such an interesting element that with scenarios and forecasting, you don't really see that that often because when you're forecasting, Yes, you can take some liberties with what you think the future will look like. Yeah. But you really can't say like, oh, because uh, we're going to get to this in 2025 because this will be invented and this will be invented. Yeah. No, you're kind of working with what you exactly, have yeah. or what you had. And I mean, in this changing environment, things change within a year. Change Things change oh, yeah. within six months. Like yeah. you can't really be working like in the past and in the present. You need to be planning for the future and you need a technique to help you do that. Yeah. The, it also allows you to uh, realize what some of the obstacles will come. Yeah. Uh, you can almost do it ahead of time so that you can know how to get past them when mm -hmm. they come. Uh, one of the first things that we did in the coaching program that I signed up for a few years ago, they actually had us go through what we would like to live to, what age we'd like to live to. Say 105, 110, 120. Pff, who knows? Uh, they, asked us to, <laughs> they asked us to then double it. So I put like 75. Uh -huh. And it said, which I think is young, but I think that was the average male age. Uh, and then they said, double it. So you're 150. Mm -hmm. If there was a technology to exist, which we don't even know of yet, because as you exactly. say, the world's changing. Mm -hmm. If we were to get to 150 years old, yeah. how do we get to 150 years old? What do we need to do to our body now? So we would treat it a hell of a lot different than if we knew we were only getting to 75. If we're getting to 150 and we realize that this vessel that we're inside of right now has to last 150 years, we would treat it a lot better than yeah. we do. So it's the same process that you actually put yourself into a future position and then you work backwards from that position. It's a lot different than if you were doing, say, even half that position in the example I used of age. Yeah. Uh, so if you took your business and you said, OK, I want to double the company. Mm -hmm. If you double the company, you're probably just going to do two times the amount of stuff you're doing right now which means that you're probably stretching out your resources. You're probably burning out people. Mm -hmm. If you were going to say you're going to change the company by 10 times, if you said 10 times, chances are you're going to do things completely different more than just twice the amount of work. Yeah. You're going to change the game, which is the difference between backcasting and forecasting. I think forecasting is kind of like more of the same. Backcasting allows yeah. you to do things or think differently outside the box. Yeah, I think forecasting also is really short term. Like it's, yeah. it's incredibly it's tomorrow yeah. and the next day at best. And yeah. it's kind of like, what are we doing in an hour? That's almost forecasting. If we knew what backcasting was, we'd be having a conversation saying in one year's time, this is where we're going to be. Now mm -hmm. let's get to work. Yeah. And then 
in that too, you can be like, okay, so in one year's time, this is where we want to be. Okay, what do we have to do in, uh, what month is it? October, S- September, 2020, August, 2020, yeah. July. It's like, you can actually, I feel like it gives you more building blocks to work with. Powerful. It's so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it made me so excited. I got like all fangirly about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was looking yeah. at like everything. I was like, oh my God, this it is change so it to If you can change it almost to everything that we do, it's different. It's a yeah. mindset where if we think that we're thinking about, yeah, as I said, cooking dinner, uh, cleaning your room, making your bed, small little details mm. like that. If you think differently as to what you want something to look like when it's done, then you work backwards from that rather than working up and not knowing where you're going. Yeah. Well, actually a really, um, so at the beginning when I said we probably do this without even thinking that we're doing it. Um, when I was in university, one of my professors gave me the best piece of advice when I was writing an essay. Right. And she said, start backwards and work to the beginning. Good advice. But that's what this is. Like yes. that is what backcasting exactly. is. So she's because every time you go to write an essay, you always think you have to start with your introduction, and your introduction is supposed to summarize basically what your essay is about. Yeah. But you haven't wrote your essay yet. You don't you even don't, know where you're going with it. Exactly. You don't know where you're going with it, but where your conclusion is, it's like that's what you want to have accomplished in your essay, right? It'd be almost like having your thesis. A lot of people don't have the thesis in mind as to what their goal, their end goal yeah. is. If you know what your thesis is, then all of a sudden it makes it a lot more accomplishable as to what you're trying to do. Uh, When you think about writing an essay uh, or completing any project, it's funny how if you can uh, start with the ending in mind, you can sometimes accomplish and set goals. And we were talking about this at the very beginning. You can then set timelines. Mm -hmm. So you can say, okay, I'd like to have this done in a week. Say your accomplishment was to write a paper in a month. You would have goals as to what you need to get done in a week, two weeks, three weeks. So I think backcasting gives you a lot more framework in regards to how to get things done on a planning side as well. Yeah, absolutely. And now... With all of our small business people out there who are listening, <laughs> um, backcasting is, like I said, it's one amazing way to plan for the future. And it's a really effective one as mm-hmm. we've both experienced just in a couple of examples that we said here, right? Yeah. Um, and again, you can utilize this in your business and in your personal life because your example was cooking. Mine was writing an essay, right? These are very simple ways that you can implement them into your life. Um, so, but what focusing on businesses And like we said, preparing for the future. Um, This is something that you should come back to all the time. It's something that you need to constantly uh, look at differently. Um, One of the the examples that I like is there's a company that I'm following right now called Sheertex. And Sheertex makes like indestructible ladies tights. Because any woman out there knows that the tights break super easy. Right. Um, So I've been following them for a little bit. And they have these amazing tights. Lots of different colors, lots of different, and they're always coming out with different styles, right? Right. Of, of like randomly, I got an email because I get, I have the subscription saying that they're coming out with um completely uh water repellent and stain proof shoes. Again, uh, this is a company. Same technology. Same technology, but this is a company that does tights, like yeah. women's tights that yeah. are now coming out with a pair of shoes. Lululemon used to just probably make tights. Now they have clothing stores absolutely i think they might even have they might even have shoes who knows they do have shoes yeah yeah so like and this sheer tech company is now coming out with bras it's like they're expanding beyond their wildest like dreams yeah. of just tights yeah so when you plan for the future you know maybe at the back of their mind they thought shoes or something or undergarments or whatever sure. but they start started with tights okay so that's how we're working backwards if we want our end goal to be all apparel yeah where should we start and they started with tights and that's a market that was in desperate need so it is something though i look at them that's and spin-off technology yeah that's almost uh that's actually if you think about uh business and they go through like the dynamics of growth mm-hmm. if you get to the point that your product's actually going into other marketplaces yeah that's when you start to hit gold mines and these companies when they start to realize that they can use the technology uh it's no different than amazon amazon sold yeah. books perfect that boom now everything yeah Boom, from that, movies, we've got music, we've got everything Groceries. for you. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Like, as you said, movies, not even just selling movies, but now broadcasting them online. Now they've taken their logistics company of selling books mm-hmm. and taken over almost all sales, more than that, different market. Now they're in TVs, as you said, and not just 
selling them, but also being on them. I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon starts getting into even tourism. They probably already are. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they start getting into, what if they start, they probably own the trucks eventually, just like UPS. Yeah. They're going to start getting so big. Uh, They're going to have that, their own shipping network. Sure. So you got to get to that point. Yeah, exactly. And so this is why I have combined some steps in order to help us get to that point and to help us think bigger and better and how we can kind of utilize some of the stuff that we've talked about today into our master plan. Let's hear it. So the first one, of course, is backcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about it like, the bulk of this episode. Sure. I'm not going to not say it. You need to you need to backcast. Even if you just start with like five or six things that you do want to accomplish or you have a vision for, start working back from that. Bring your team together. Bring everyone together and start just focusing on, you know, five or six things that you want your future to look like. You yeah. want the vision to look like. Yeah. Um, the next one is to create a work culture. So when you're planning for your growth and you're planning for your future, you want to make sure that your culture stays the same. I think that's something that's very important from the get-go to your end game kind of thing. So You mean to set it? To set it. Set it early. To set it early, yes. Yeah. So you want to create an environment that allows for growth, allows for planning, allows for people to be creative and have the opportunity to be creative. Yep. So basically, you want to create an environment where your backcasting and your planning is going to be able to excel yeah. in an environment. You yep. don't want to like close off creativity right away you don't want to say no you want it to be a safe environment for the plan or the the planning to work absolutely yeah so a culture of safety mm -hmm. a culture of openness a culture of togetherness a culture of uh nothing's wrong shared uh, goals yeah exactly yep yeah. agreed 100 percent um the other one i kind of already said is update 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 so keep updating it as you move along because like you said something that you could have visioned five years in the future could be achieved in two Sure. So after that's done, get a new one. Yeah, I think that uh, we were recently doing some business planning with uh, uh, some boards and they uh, suggested that there's no such thing as a five-year plan anymore, a 10-year plan. They don't even do them anymore. It's all two to three-year plans tops mm. uh, because uh, the, the, the world changes so quickly yeah. uh, that if you put together a strategic plan, uh, it's obsolete, literally, in probably a year to two. Yeah. Actually, Which there is was, insane. There was one website that I was looking at and they were saying like when you do it, it's good to do for like 25 to 50 years. And I'm like, this website must be so old because something that like I couldn't even imagine thinking like thinking about 20, tangent. <laughs> yes, slight tangent. But if you thought about what you wanted in your life in 20 years. Yeah. When 2000, I was four in 20 years. Did I think I'd be where I am today? Heck no. No. I thought I'd be a Disney princess. <laughs> and like I knew how to, when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to be a Disney princess. Yeah. But obviously I'm not a Disney princess, even though I think sometimes I am. Yeah. Um, but that's something like I, right now I cannot picture what my life would be like when I'm 43. It's tough. I think that a lot of the thinking around it, uh, still on the tangent, um, they talk about Japanese companies mm. often do have 100 to 200 year plans. Uh, they too, they do think very, very long term. Uh, but I think that a lot of them are visions. Mm. Uh, they do look at because their companies are not created to last tomorrow till tomorrow. The companies, if you look at them, are some of them are three, four, five, six, seven hundred years old, maybe even over a thousand. There's companies that are literally like they've been longevity. Mm -hmm. So they do think longevity, but I bet you they probably have one to two year plans, like true plans or one to two yeah. years long, circulate them out, but they do have long visions, Yes. Uh, which I think would probably be an important factor too. Yeah. And so that's something that, of course, you know what? This isn't really a tangent. This still has to do with yeah. updating. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, definitely like you can have, you know, your 50 year plan, uh, but you should also have some along the way, like we're Creeping. like almost like um, pit stops kind of thing. Yep. So anyway, keep updating it. Um also the again explore my last tip is explore so like i said with my example from sheer text you know they're exploring different avenues right now and i think that's really cool so they're looking at you know marketplace different things in the marketplace looking at um things that uh you know is there an untouched resource how can i use my product to suit someone else's needs i mean you hear about it a lot where people create a product and then it's not used for that yeah like, I, uh -huh, yeah. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I know there's tons of products out there where it was designed to do one thing and then it ended up being used for something completely different. You, on a saleable feature sometimes, but you'll be surprised how things actually become 
useful for a lot of things. So for instance, like pool noodles. Yeah. Um, I've seen people use pool noodles to hold furniture inside of a car so it doesn't bang up against the walls. Yeah. I've seen them put it on horseshoe pits so it doesn't actually, no one can trip on it or the kids don't get hurt when they walk by the horseshoe screws. Yeah. I, th I feel like pool noodles have probably been used across the board on so many different outlets. And oddly enough, they're still sold just as pool noodles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I saw a video just on pool noodles that was for like a uh, ladder, like a ladder, like when you're climbing sure. up the ladder to have something squishy. Yeah. So or people put them on their 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 bikes so they they float when they if they fall in the water. I've seen people put them. Yeah. Well, we've done it as we did this when we were my friends and I. We did this because we were taking the bike down the pathway and they were launching them into the water. So we put pool noodles on the boat on the bike so that it would float to the top after we ditched it in the air. <laughs> it worked. The youth. Yeah. What an insight into yeah. Josh's childhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely. So I guess you could do that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just like being able to see what your, you know, even if it's your process or something, being able to teach that or be able to have that being adapted into different marketplaces and sure. different resources, I think is it's substantial. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, Peter, Peter Diam Diamandis, he does... I think it's called like the six D's. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but he does talk about when the marketplace expands into other technologies. So for instance, uh, Kodak back in the day uh, was just film, mm -hmm. but they missed the mark because they didn't get into cameras. So they just the continued same. to make film. And when yeah. they just made film, they actually lost the market because film stopped, but cameras went flying and they owned the entire photography world mm. uh, and then all of a sudden within like a year or two gone yeah so if people aren't paying attention they can also become obsolete very quickly if they're not aware of the other things around them that are opportunities yeah and that's such that's a great addition to the exploring it's just like make sure that you're on top of your shit you yeah. know like don't be a kodak don't yeah. be like uh i well, we just do one thing and we do one thing great yes it's like that's not the way the world works anymore. You Newspapers, can't just do... they've now gone online. Yeah. The ones that have gone online are still surviving. The ones that didn't go online, gone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's the thing. You need to have, you want accessibility. Like your clients want accessibility. They want to be able to, yep. to have that technology at their hands. Yeah. So again, these are just, was that four, four simple tips to helping you plan for your future. Um, I will say, though, you should be excited about your futures. Like, futures aren't supposed to be scary. They're they're supposed to be, you know, visionary and they're supposed oh, yeah. to be exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, I've loved talking about backcasting because I, I think it is such a, a cool way to look at the world and look at your future and get excited about it yeah. in a way. Yeah. And it's also something that uh, you can do with, like I said, your team. This and is your something, family. Yeah, and your family. Yourself. Exactly. Like... Oh, the, the, for your family, family example, if you want your baby to walk, it's like, okay, baby needs to walk. What's, what's step 10, you know, yep. like, how are we going to get baby to walk? Yeah. Maeve just started swimming recently and it's kind of like, uh, I don't think like, could she be an Olympic swimmer? Yeah, she could. But if I really wanted her to be, and she wanted to be, you would have to then work backwards from Olympic swimmer yeah. and get her to that. Absolutely. You don't just say, oh, she's in swimming lessons. We'll see if she becomes an Olympic swimmer one day. No, yeah, it's the yeah. opposite. You have yeah. to work backwards from what your goal is. Yeah. You'd be feeding that baby like 110 pancakes a sure. day to be like Michael Phelps. Yeah. But yeah. Gotta no. start early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta get her on that Michael yeah. Phelps diet early. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of it for the episode today. I mean, cool. this is... I, I, I feel like this has been such an insightful episode yeah. into like the workings of business and I'm glad we got to talk about it. I like that concept. I do too. And yeah. I love planning. I literally, I, I get giddy over planning. So yeah. knowing that I have a new technique to uh, plan for whatever I do is just like, Oh my God, I'm like buzzing right now. I'm like literally shaking. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's cool. it for this episode today. Awesome. So we hope you all have a fantastic week. Yeah. Happy November. Yeah, all the best for the last of the fall. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh, no, it's going to be winter soon. That's all right. It's not going to be wet and rainy and fall. It'll be nice and snow and white. No, it's not. It's going to rain, too. Skiing time. <laughs> Hardly. All right. Anyway. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for stopping by our channel. If you have any questions or if you're looking to buy or sell, go to our website and contact us today. Knowledge is power and creates experts in understanding. If you want power, hit thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get weekly videos from me, your knowledge